Welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Another beautiful yet very warm day here in sunny Florida. Summer is kicking into full gear. I come back from my walks on the beach drenched at this time of year. So it takes a while to, to get cleaned up. Um, normally I can walk and not be super sweaty, but summer is pretty bad. So I never run out of things to say on this coffee chat because all I have to do is go on Facebook and I am in so many hair color and hairdresser groups that there's always a question that spurs a topic for me. And today's topic is, do you really know and understand what is in the tube of color that you are choosing? The deeper part of that question is when you refer to an ash, if you say, oh, I know I need to use ash. Ash is a broad term that's like a blanket statement that can be many different things. It can be blue. It can be violet. It can be green. It can be all different versions of what cool is. And a question that sparked this topic was, you know, I'm out of... Um, I think it was 5M. I'm out of 5M. What can I use to replace it? And they didn't say what color line the 5M was. And all of these people jumped into the rescue saying, oh, just use this. And I use this and this. And one version of their answer was a reddish brown. One version of their answer was a green based cool color because every different manufacturer has either a letter or a numbering system, but not all of them are the same. Wouldn't it be nice if they all got together and said, hey, let's not confuse every hairdresser in the entire planet and make these things up as we go along. Let's stick with one system now because it's marketing and they're trying to stand out above the rest. And it also benefits them for you to be a little confused because you're not going to be so quick to switch lines when their stock is running behind or your deliveries are late and you're starting to get the, I need to move on. You're going to be more nervous about moving on because you're not really sure what the heck you were using in the first place. So let me, let me give an example. So in that five M example, matrix M is a mocha. A lot of other lines M is mahogany. So let's talk about the difference between mocha and mahogany. When I picture mocha, I picture chocolate hot chocolate, milk chocolate, warm chocolate, slightly warm yet cool at the same time, if that makes sense. Like you look at a candy bar and you don't think of it as warm, but if you really dissect it, the shade of it, it would lean more warm than cool. So that's mocha. Then mahogany is like a violety brown. So all M's are not created equal because in Shades EQ, M is matte and matte is green. In Wella, matte is green. So do you see how confusing that could be? So if you're just, you know, quickly reacting, grabbing a tube and saying, that sounds pretty, sounds pretty. I know a lot of colorists that color by name. They're not even coloring by numbers. They're coloring by name. They're picking up Shades EQ and they're saying, oh, Cafe Olay, that sounds like exactly what I want. But they don't know what the heck a Cafe Olay is and what the base of the color is. Base meaning... Does it have blue undertone, violet undertone, gold, green, orange, whatever it may be, that is all in those little bottles. But if we don't know that, no wonder you're jumping color lines left and right because you didn't know what the heck you were working with in the first place. So I have a photo that I want to share. Um, this one is in my hand. I can share with you. This is from an Italian color company. And if you saw the videos uh, prompting you to come here to the coffee chat. This is what I used in the video. So what's nice about these circles is yes, it's our beloved color wheel that keeps us on track. And we talked, I believe it was last week or maybe two weeks ago about the center of the wheel actually being gray, not brown. So I talk a lot about canceling tones and doing all the things in reference to using demi-permanent color and depositing only and correcting things and glazing things. But today I wanna to talk about it in a permanent color situation because when you're working with permanent color, you're always lifting and lightening. 
And anytime you lift and lighten, there's going to be warmth, whether you invited it or not. So this wheel helps tremendously because each shade is going to land inside of an area of the wheel. And you can't really see close up, but you'll see that the one in this color line is green. And then when you have a two one, when you have two and one together, it falls here in this violet area. It's not green at all. So if you're not feeling a little overwhelmed and confused by where I am right now, you should be because it's a lot, but it's not at the same time because all you need to know is the color you're working on at that moment. If you get overwhelmed with choices, if you walk into a uh, salon centric or a Cosmoprof, or you're just walking into a salon store, it's so overwhelming those aisles and rows of all those little swatches that are hanging, you know, they're hanging like this off the thing. And you're like, oh, okay, that's really bright. But is it really going to be that bright on someone with level two hair? No. If you put it on my hair, yeah. Know the difference. Know the difference with what you're working with <clears throat> and, not or, and what you're putting it on. So where you're coming from, where you're going, and what you're using all has to be discerned before you pluck that tube out of the pile and say your Hail Mary or your whatever, whoever or whatever you pray to, please let this turn out. There's such a better way, just understanding what is what. So of course, two minutes before I got on, I'm going all over the internet trying to find a visual for you. God forbid I do it the day before. And this is from Wella. So you can see stroke zero is natural. That means it's going to allow when you're lightening with a natural, you are allowing anything that's occurring naturally in the hair during its lifting process. So if you know the, the picture on the left of the screen, lightest blonde, very light blonde, light blonde, if you know in your mind all the stages of lightening that someone goes through on their way to being lighter, you know that there's a lot of warmth that comes along with that. So stroke zero is saying, welcome warmth. Come on in. I don't mind you being here. I'm going to allow you to the party. But don't think for a second that using a natural is going to just be a natural blonde, a natural brown, whatever, you know, light, whatever level of lightness it is. It's not going to be natural, meaning you look like a young girl walking down the beach with God-given brown. That's not what natural means. Stroke one is saying ash. So you're like, oh, an ash, that's great. But look at the difference. Stroke one is blue green. Stroke two just says ash matte. I know from doing a, dig a, a deeper dig that stroke two is green, but you wouldn't know that just by looking at the word matte. So I've had classes, <clears throat> I've had classes in my salon with different manufacturer reps that they send out with their big giant flip chart and all their tubes and bottles and all of their excitement and knowledge for product knowledge. And I've been maybe an hour into the class and they keep referring to, and you know, H stroke two is this, and, and we're going to use a, a mat that we're going to use an ash that. And I'd say to them, what is your, what is your ash? I'm like, what do you mean it's ash? I'm like, yes, but is it a blue green ash? Is it a straight blue ash? Is it a blue violet ash? And the hairy eyeballs that I've gotten back from every single one of them with no exception. I have never had a, a educator come into the salon that could answer my question. And they're repping that brand. They're trying to teach salons how to use that color. And then they're surprised when they're not selling a lot of color, especially the matte series, the stroke two green, they might sell, you know, a dozen a week of that stroke green. And for me, I'm like, bring on the green. We have all these brunettes that don't want any red in their hair. We need that green. But ignoring it, avoiding it, being afraid of it, that used to be me. I used to be like, you know what? I'm not really sure about using green on the hair. So I'm just going to avoid that. And I'm just going to go safe and go with the violet. We all tend to feel safe and warm and, and warm and fuzzy towards violet. But I want you to remember, and I've said this on a million of these coffee chats, 
violet is made by mixing red and blue. So if you're trying to combat red in a brunette and you're choosing a violet, you're pouring more red onto the red that's already coming out in the hair. And then you're like, why did it come out like eggplant? It looks like eggplant brown now. It looks almost like that purpley. Yeah. Your violet turned that already living there red that's in the hair that you're not visibly seeing. It's really hard to explain that. And that's the thing that I think confuses people the most, but make no mistake. It is there. It is there. So Lisa just said, I learned color with Aveda. When I went on my own, I was slash M sometimes still confused. After Aveda, I feel like every other color line is like picking box color at Walgreens. I'm so glad you said that, Lisa. I did an in-person hands-on class. Uh, one of them might be on here now. Hopefully they're watching. They found me on the coffee chat and they said, do you do one-on-ones? And I said, absolutely. I love meeting people in person. So they came, we did a live model and they both, the, it was a mom and daughter. The mom manages the salon and the daughter works there as a, she specializes in corrective color, which was cool, but it's an Aveda salon. And we got talking about Aveda. Now I was brought up in the Aveda culture at my first salon where I had uh, a lot of my training, but Aveda did not have color back then. So we still used the other brands and we weren't taught in Aveda color. But Aveda is much like um, Logix where it's not pre-blended colors. We've gotten spoiled by the manufacturers mixing blue and violet together for us where we don't have to build the color in. But Lisa, I promise you that training is going to serve you. You're going to have to take a step back and dumb yourself down a little bit for lack of a better phrase where you're trying to overthink it because you had to when you were building color, but now just lean into the pre-blended things if that's what you chose to use on your own. I mean, you can still use Aveda if you're, if you're used to doing it that way, but it is completely different. And that's how we were taught back in the 80s, you know, how, <clears throat> how color comes about and what makes these tones happen. And I think the pre-blended color, as much of a gift as it is, I think what happens is a newer stylist who is not taught fundamentally what bases make those pre-blended colors, they're watching a mentor like Lisa, someone who's been around longer and has used Aveda, and they're watching her mix two and three different things together in a bowl. So we're like, oh, that looks fancy. I'm going to mix two or three things in a bowl. But color that's already pre-blended already has two in one color. So when you mix two of a well of shade, say you mix a stroke seven one with a stroke seven three, I'm just, or no, that's a bad example. Stroke seven one with stroke one two. You're mixing four tones together now in a bowl. And what do you think is going to happen? Color, as I say all of the time, in case you missed it, I'll say it again. Color does not have a brain. It doesn't know what to do when it gets in there and only do its job I'm sorry, it does only know how to do one thing and it's what it's designed to do. So when you mix all those shades in a bowl, the blue is going to go after the orange because that's what it's designed to do. But that might not have been your intention because your blue might have been mixed with something else. So don't feel like multiple tones are fancy. Really understand by looking at your color wheel where are you and where do you need to be? What is the issue that you're dealing with? And don't overkill anything. A lot of times there's a little bit of residual right now. I'm a perfect example. Florida weather, Florida weather, Florida water turns me urine yellow. I am very urine yellow right now and I'm very unhappy about it. So for me, you know, the, the natural um, knee jerk reaction is, oh, let me grab a bottle of a 10 V mix it with a little bit of clear, run it through my hair for 15 minutes and my yellow will be gone. It will be gone. All right. Because the V is going to take it totally to the center of that wheel, which is gray. I don't want my hair to be gray. I just want it to be blonde with no yellow. So do you see how like we automatically go for the complete cancellation? And I talked about that on the other one when I, when I was talking about shades of going a little bit more towards the warmth instead and picking something in like a pale pink or more on this chart. Where is it? Let's 
So do you see here in your, um, down the bottom in stroke eight and stroke nine, look at pearl blue and then look at Sandre. So Sandre, again, if you go by names, you're like, oh, we're going to give you some Sandre. It sounds all fancy and exotic, but it's just gray stroke violet. So what that's saying is it's a gray violet version of a cool versus a harsh blue. Blue, I say all the time, is the bully and it will always win. So if you don't want the bully in there and you just want a little bit of cancellation, for me, out of this list, instead of a stroke one ash blue green or a stroke two cool ash matte, I would choose a stroke nine out of these choices because it's giving me that soft, softer violet that's not going to completely obliterate all of the warmth in my hair, but it's going to keep me in that cooler, brighter, whiter blonde that I'm looking for. So I know it's a lot, but it's really not like just understand, like get out that dusty, pull out that book that came with your color line that we all have. Ours was a bottom drawer in the color room had the big thick binder book that has all of the hairy um, swatches in it that we never used it to show our client like, oh, look, this is what we're going to do. I don't agree with that. But sometimes you need to go back to that book because in those books, 99% of the time you're going to find this wheel and where your individual color lands on the wheel. And you may be surprised like here, you know, a stroke three on this wheel is here where it's nice and lemony and bright. And if you go over just two stages over here and add that stroke one, it becomes more like a yellow green. And yellow green is necessary when something is, you know, leaning more towards a red orange than an orange because there's red in there. You want that little bit of green in there, but you might not want all green because it's not all red, it's more orange. So play with swatches, do experiments, talk to other colorists. Some of the best information I've ever gotten that has moved the needle forward in my career was in line at a hair show for lunch. We're waiting in line to be fed the lousy food that they have. And I start talking to somebody next to me in line and they're like, oh, I love your color. And I would say, oh my gosh, it's so brassy. I can't get rid of this brass. You know, I'm a darker person trying to be light. So all that orange comes in and they're like, oh, don't do that. Do this. Try this, this product. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. You put it on for two minutes. They're the, conf they're the little nuggets and the amazing things that I love um, having happen at my events, my live events. I love the friendships that develop. I love the sense of community that when I, I was on vacation and one of my members reached out to another member and he saved her butt in a corrective situation talked her through the whole thing, called her at 6 a.m. before her client to make sure she was okay. That's what I'm talking about. Lean into getting other people around you and playing with color and doing swatching exercises. One of my favorite classes was at a friend's salon in Hawaii. And we got our hands dirty and we pulled out swatches. And I said, look, I'm going to mess up this hair on purpose. And I'm going to turn it a really funky drab color. And then Together, we're going to figure out how to quickly and easily fix it. And they were blown away by how quickly I could take that away just by using another shade. Because I know this back and forth inside out because I've been using it in my brain for 35 years. So once you know, you know. But if you keep guessing, praying, avoiding, being afraid to really understand, you'll never understand. Samantha said, why does the V automatically take you to gray? So you tell me. V completely cancels a strong V, which is what I use, completely cancels yellow. So if you're completely canceling on a color wheel, you're going from yellow to violet. You're going across, which means cancels. When you cancel, you're meeting in the middle. The middle is gray. So if you don't want to go all the way to gray, you have to shift slightly a little bit warmer. You see different people on Instagram, TikTok, all the things saying, add some warmth to your shade, add some warmth to your shade. And I remember I was like, what are they talking about? That's what they're talking about. Lean in a little bit towards the warmer side so that it doesn't completely cancel it and make everything look like mud. So that's why that happens. 
And yes, Melanie, hair shows in person are amazing. Um, I prefer smaller, more boutique shows. And that's where I'm taking my business in that direction of 30 person smaller group get togethers, not hair show floors with the thumping music and 80 million people trying to sell you the same version of a hairspray with a different brand wrapped around the can. Um, I still love a hair show for the energy of it, but to really get in there and get things that are going to move my career forward, I prefer a smaller event where I can actually meet the educator, have lunch with them, talk to them, really get to know them outside of what they had, you know, maybe 90 minutes to share on a stage at a bigger show. So keep educating yourself. Keep coming back here to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. I hope you'll check out my podcast. Um, it is called Ask the Color Expert. I am behind. I was traveling a lot, so I have to catch up. I'm going to be um, recording some episodes today. If you have any topics that you would like to for me to talk about on the podcast, please put it in the comments because I'm filming all day today and I'm already, I can hear I'm losing my voice already. So I need to be able to get to the point and not ramble and have good, good things to talk about that are going to really help you out. So topics for the podcast would be amazing. Check out my YouTube. I have not given my YouTube any love recently and I need to because that's how I find a lot of hairdressers who need what I have to help them with. So I connect with a lot of people through my YouTube so check out my YouTube, check out my podcast and all of my education offerings. You're going to be seeing a really cool offer for my book. Um, you're going to be get, able to get my ebook with a bonus training on what I learned since writing the book that's not in the book. So like anything between the time the book was written until now, there's like five main things that have changed since writing the book. And that's the bonus with this offer. So keep your eye out for it. If you're on my mailing list, you'll be getting an email. If you're not on my mailing list, I'm putting my website in here. <clears throat> I would love for you to join my list so that you know when the in-person events are happening. Um, Jesse has been on the podcast, Michael, so you can, you can go back to that, but I'm, I'm happy to invite him again. Um, yeah, he's awesome. So he's been on the podcast. Gary has been on the podcast. Felix, we need to get you on the podcast. That would be awesome. I would love to talk about your journey and your bravery as a colorist. And Carolyn said, we learned a lot of beauty at the beach. Yes, thank you for that. And I'm happy you, you connected with Donna and you're going to see a whole new world of your finances um, from, from working with Donna. So that's awesome. So thank you as always for watching. I will see you next week. We're going to have a special guest. Speaking of Gary, um, Beth Minardi was one of my first guests. So just Michael, just keep scrolling all the way down. Um, she's on there. That was like such a, such a, you know, pinch me moment having my mentor um, on the podcast. So um, yes, I just went off, off the rails. Um, oh, Gary, Gary is my guest next week. We're going to talk about protecting that color that your client invested in and you invest at the time in giving them during the summer months, what you need to do differently during the summer that you may not be doing all year and you may not even realize. Um, Sandy, yes, Max, Max is on the calendar. We just haven't gotten to it yet. So thank you for the suggestions. Jay, Jay the Barber. Okay. I don't know who that is, but if you send me his info, I'm happy to reach out. So thank you so much and have a great day and enjoy your holiday weekend. If you're celebrating July 4th, have a wonderful, safe time. I hope you have great weather and yeah, have a great day.